Hello everyone, welcome to Ocean Ambassador's second educator and maritime stakeholders roundtable in our words. As you can see, I am here on the green carpet. My name is Inumidu. I am going to interview every single person here from the winners to the students, the teachers, the the stakeholders, the people that brought this all together. So stay tuned with me and let's go. industry and the country has always been a motivation and also an inspiration. I am here with one of Ocean's Foundation stakeholder. Ma, how are you doing? I'm good. Could you please introduce yourself? I'm Dr. Yinka Anyondili, the Permanent Secretary Education DC3, Lagos. Wow, this is so Ma, I'm sure during your time doing all of this, you would have seen a lot of challenges, a lot of things. What motivated you to continue? Uh, well, actually, these children are my motivation. I want to see them grow and um, take up the responsibilities expected of them and then take our nation, Nigeria, to the next level. So, um, Ma, I would like to ask, what advice do you have for these young ones? Because I'm sure seeing everything they've tried to accomplish would be so impressive to you. Well, this is an eye-opener to all of them. Uh, that the horizon has broadened and that they should take opportunities therein in the ocean activities. Um, Nigeria, especially Lagos State, we are surrounded by waters. So, lots of opportunities. Um, they should take or the, this opportunity and ensure that they get to the best level they, they can be so that they can not only compete with their counterparts globally but that they sh they will be able to contribute meaningfully to the growth of Nigeria. Okay, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed your day. Thank you so much. Right here, right now with me, I have the chairman of Usha's Ambassadors Foundation. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Are you all did you enjoy the event? Yes, I did. Okay, so um, being into maritime and all of this, how has it been? Well, the, manis, the maritime industry is actually the economic backrock of this nation. But with it, we dare say that uh, those of us at the forefront of maritime industry development need to fashion our policy framework that will drive this industry. Today we're just discussing about blue economy. We're looking at the knowledge aspect, how we use knowledge to drive the blue economy. And uh, we have seen other nations of the world. The presenter just told us that she shares a third world country moving to almost first world, um, world country using um, uh, the ocean. So harnessing the uh, harnessing, of course, the 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 benefits of the ocean, harnessing the economic, you know, power of the ocean is critical. So in Nigeria, we need to do more to be able to use the ocean as a major major economic, you know, driver, so that uh, we can get away from this. Uh, then we will refer to Nigeria as capital, I mean, uh, poverty capital of the world. We have so much, you know, in this country. We are still endowed to be classified as such. That's, that's so true. Um, sir, seeing that now, now there's change, we can see that it's not, it's no more just a male dominated sector, it is now more of all genders. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't think where you get your statistics. It is still more of male-dominated sector okay. industry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but we we are expecting more.
female gender to join this industry. I am in the logistic and transport sector, and I know what I'm talking about. Still about um, more than 80 percent of, uh, it's more than 80 percent dominated of male. Okay. But having said that, we encourage the female folks to come on board. I'm, I'm excited each time I see uh, young ladies in my class. I, I teach logistics, I teach transport. I have you know, a maritime person and I'm, I'll be, I'm so happy when I see the female gender joining the class. Most of the time you see two or three where you have about 80 men <laughs> in the <laughs> class. Oh. So, so, but it will be a pleasure. Yes. Because it's a green area we expect that uh, the female folks will join us. Okay. So, sir, what do you have? as an advice to the new upcoming people that really want to go into maritime? I would, would try to say from, from the basics, we need to actually take transportation down to the basics. Right from primary school, secondary, up to university. As at now, we talk about transportation at both postgraduate level and then, then professional bodies. No, it doesn't work that way. We should now look at the meaning of transportation, particularly maritime transport how it is a driver of the economy. Now, we, we, the, the new understanding of what it represents shows that we should uh, work harder more, come together more. Then also, if it means stealing, what I mean by stealing ideas from those that have made it work in their countries, do it. When I mean stealing, I mean I'm using that when you yes. quote. You know, getting knowledge, getting skill, getting competent people to run this industry. So that's what I think. The, 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 the future of Nigeria depends upon this industry. Oil may go. Other, other aspects of the economy may go, but water okay. will remain. Yes. So we need to quickly uh, do something differently. You cannot do the same thing, I expect the same result. I mean, different result. You will need to do things differently so that we can get the result we are looking out for. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for that advice. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Life is full of many opportunities. Mm -hmm. You just need to touch life today. See if you want. Okay, so here on the green carpet, I am here with the winner. How do you feel? Oh. I don't know how to say, but I feel well. I feel good, and I feel good. You feel good. So, how much work did it take you to put in to actually really win this prize? Well, it took a lot, a lot of work. Like I had to stay away from phone and the television for weeks, and just anytime my brothers see me, just go to us the sitting room and be like, "Hey, get back to your room. You have something to work for." So that's just how we felt. So I'm sure with the way they've appreciated and honored you, you would surely study very time. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you so much for coming. Like I said before, that seeing women dominate the industry is always inspiring and motivating. Here with me, I have one of Ocean's Foundation's stakeholders. She's an amazing person. I just saw the interview inside. Honestly, you would be amazing. Ma, please, can you introduce yourself? Engineer Sarat Braima is my name. I'm the area manager at National Island Hotel with Authority, Lagos area office. Yeah, so I had watching the interview. So, how did you thrive through all of that? Yeah, I was a marine engineer. I joined, uh, I started my career with the uh, NMPC in uh, Atlas Cove. I was the, I was a training there then among the men in the ship. And it was challenging because I was the only female on board. But it was very interesting and I came out very fine. That is why I was encouraged to do more and join more. When I finished my university, after my service here, I was employed into National Inland Water with Authority in my department, which is the marine department. I was the only female then. And now I'm the first female area manager in Lagos. So it has been wonderful. It is an honor to meet you, Ma. So, Ma, um, I would like to ask now, seeing females, like young females, trying to follow that same footsteps you've been in, how do you feel? I feel so happy. That's why I'm always encouraging women to go into this. Because if you are hardworking, if you are flair for this job, you will go far. 
you go really far. Thank you. So, Ma, what, what is the main advice you can give those young people? Be hardworking, be focused, and know what you want. And you be friends making people's lives touching Still back on the green carpet, and I'm here with a beautiful maritime chick older. Welcome, Ma. How are you? Today? I'm fine. I'm okay. And you? Thank you. <laughs> so it's actually really nice to see you here. Um, being seeing all of this, how do you feel? Uh, you see, I first of all, I must comment the effort of the organizer. That is our chief, Mrs. Violet Olaita. She's doing a great job because this is Catch Them Young. Bringing these youth to the maritime sector is, I think, is a thing of commendable. So I thank her and I really appreciate me. Almighty God be with her. Entering the hall today, I think I feel so great and I feel glad that at least we have the youth that can take over from us. That is, that is really beautiful. So, ma'am, what is the advice you would have to young youth that are ready to go into maritime? The, my advice to them is that they should reach work very hard. It is not easy to be in the maritime sector because the maritime is very broad. You have to be determined and know what you want to do at the maritime. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I do. I Thank you so much for coming. I am going to say this once again. Women are taking the industry by storm from official to economical, social, and every single part and aspect of life. I have with me an amazing person. Welcome, how are you doing? I'm fine. Could you please introduce yourself? I don't want to do that introduction. Okay, my name is Engine Alwadam Nola Dubamipe. So I saw our interview inside, and like, I saw so many pictures of uh, do it. how do you get all those stuff? How, how much work did it take for you to put in to actually get to this stage? Uh, actually, it's, it's a lot of work, but I'll say when you have a passion, it makes the work very easy. You just see like you're playing games. That's the way I just see it. I have my passion, I have my determination, and I know where I'm going to. I'm yet, I'm yet to be there. Yeah. But I know I'm going to be there very soon, so by God's grace. So basically, your whole world revolved around the men industry. You were surrounded by men all through, from courses to classes, from work, how did, Train. how did, to trainings. So how did, how did you feel being in the middle of men? Yeah, from my childhood, I always loved to be with the men because they challenge me to do what I think I can to do. True. So, and I love challenges, including when I was uh, included in the Cowbellpedia. I was with the you men. Went there? Yes, Cowbellpedia when I was in secondary school and it was all men. I was the only lady to when I was in JSS2, I did my junior work with the men getting promotion to SS1. So, it has been all around men, men, men and the only sectors that I can be challenged like that is around is the, is the, the men's sector. industry. Wow, this is really nice. So, Maritime, how has it, how has it been for you? Oh, Maritime is a very nice industry and I know that we are the, one, one of the best sector yes, in the world. And you no, know, when I get get out and they call me, ah, I love your uniform, I love your posture, I love this. It gets me inspired. Yeah, it wow. gets me like I just want to do more. I just want to help the girls coming up. I just want to inspire them. And this is what keeps me going. Yeah. So I heard Mrs. Violet Williams say she was really proud and everything. And like I just want to ask. I want you to give an advice to the young ones that are aspiring to get to where you are. Please give them a little bit of advice. Okay, the advice I'll give to the young ones coming up is that whatever you love doing, don't anyone put you down. No matter the statement coming around, because the statement that will keep coming is, no, 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 you can't do this, it's main job, you can't do that. But one thing is that when you have the, your passion, you have your determination, you can get to wherever you can get to. And I keep saying to myself that I am a female marine engineer, yes, I am, but my gender does not limit limitate me. But I get to where I want to get to according to my determination, and it gets me to my passion. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoy your Thank day. you very much. So girls, there you have it, guys. Don't let the fact that it's a male sector, don't let that bring you down. Thank you so much.
there with me is one of the winners. Baby, how do you feel? Oh, I feel very glad. I feel really proud. very proud. Well, it's really nice. Let them see the tag. As you can see, studying for maritime is quite the work. It, it takes a lot of time and all. So, being what exactly did you have to stay away from and do to actually get to this point? Um, uh, distractions and you have to really concentrate yeah. and focus. Um, and then I guess I had my siblings helping me concentrate. Okay, so are you willing to go into maritime? Well, I guess yes, because now I've been exposed to the opportunity that I wasn't aware of there before. Mm, that's true. That's really true. So I hope we see you become a really great maritime. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Okay, right here I am with one of Ocean's Ambassadors Foundation stakeholders. Good afternoon, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Are you? I'm okay, thank so you. You're keeping safe. Yes, I am. Okay, <laughs> Ma, I saw, I listened to your um, lecture and being in maritime, I'm sure it would have taken a lot of effort, a lot of work and everything. So, how has it been so far? Oh, it's been um, interesting. But um, as as you said, anything that um, any anything you you deserve to do very well, or you deserve to get sustainable sustainable benefit from, you must work hard to get it. So it's no stress. It's just if you have it at your back of your mind, you work hard. You work hard. I really I worked hard, and uh, and I'm enjoying it today. Yeah. Well, Ma, I have to say I am honored. It's actually really nice to see women in a male-dominated sector. It's it's inspiring. So, being in a male-dominated sector, what how was it? Um, yeah, you see how I look at things. I just look at it as human-dominated sector. I don't okay. look at male. I don't consider gender. Okay. You know, somebody has that one describe you. Oh, that mom, you work so hard. You don't work like a woman you are in fact you're a man woman <laughs> i said what do you mean by that but i, I from chi from time i decided i decided and i, I took it I, I told myself you don't have to deceive yourself by putting barriers putting tagging yourself you're a female you cannot do this you know you, sh you do everything that any human being that is desirous of doing what she could do just do, do, do what is required and you get there. Okay, well, thank you. Um, so, Ma, what would be your advice to the new upcoming people that want to go into maritime? Yeah, just like I said in the course of my lecture, is for them to be inquisitive, you know? Yeah. Now they've, they've, known, they've known that, oh, it's possible. So they ask themselves, so how do I get this? How do I get that? Now, you people are living in a very good world during their own time. You, if you want information, you have to write British Council to please send you this journal. And it will, it will take weeks or months before the journal will arrive wow. to you. But now, we have uh, access to internet, we have Google, just ask Google, you know, Google will tell you. Yeah, sure. So, you just to know, check through, ask questions, ask people, you mean the way you're asking me now, yeah, then you now know what it takes, you work hard, yeah. Hard work doesn't kill, that it will promote you, yeah. yeah. Mm. Thank you so much, Ma. You, I hope yeah. you enjoyed your day. Sure, I did. Thank you so much. Touching lives, touching lives. Life is full of many opportunities. I have here with me somebody you can describe as really the blue economy. Please, can you introduce yourself? Um, good day. I'm Captain Noimot Akasa. I work on the inland waterways as a river master. So I man barges, fast boats, passenger boats, etc. Uh, in light of this, I'm very proud to be in this event today because when I see the youth growing, learning the career that is not common in the in the Nigeria as a whole because it's a specialized career. When I see people, uh, puppies growing in that feed. Being encouraged to be a seafarer, I'm proud and um, I'll be glad to be their mentors as well. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm sure it took a lot of work to be where you were today. So what advice do you have to these young people that are aspiring to be someone like you? Uh, first and foremost, information is very important. The youth, what they need is to make a lot of research online 
even if you even if you are being told the procedure to follow in order to be a seafarer, make sure you devote your time on research. Go online, do a lot of research. Don't use your data to tweet. Don't use your data for WhatsApp or any other. Research. Use your time to do a lot of research online. Then you see a lot of maritime institutions in Nigeria and in the world as a whole. Then you make your choice. You see a lot of careers that you can be make in the industry. In fact, maritime industry is an industry where when you are done with your professional career, after the experience you have gathered in the industry, you can be a boss on your own. You can own your own companies. You can be a, you can be a manager. You can be a CEO of a company. So it's a career that when you devote your time in it, you will be proud of yourself tomorrow. And I will leave you with this note. Anything worth doing, worth doing well. Okay, right here, right now, I am with the winner and his mom. Good afternoon, Ma. How do you? How are you doing? Good afternoon. I'm okay. How are you doing too? Well, we've interviewed them before. Um, I'm fine, still. <laughs> yeah, still fine. So, Ma, I'm sure seeing the fact that your son was up on the stage, getting so many awards, I'm sure you are really, really proud. Of course, yes, I'm proud of him. Okay, so can you tell us the kinds of feelings you felt right when that happened? I feel great. Right inside me, I feel great. That's really nice. So what are the things you had to restrict him from doing, you had to stop him from doing, you had to push him to do to actually get to this point? Mm -hmm. The only thing I think I have to push him from doing is to study harder. To study harder, because he mentioned not so long ago that he was restricted from watching TV, he was restricted from, what, from pressing his phones. So like, seeing how he has been appreciated, would you push him into maritime? Choice. Whoa. Depend on him. That's true. This is choice. This is choice. You are really an amazing mother. Thank you so much. So I hope you enjoyed your day. Of course, yes, I Thank do. you so much, Ma. Touching lives. Touching lives. Life is full of many opportunities. Okay, right here I am with the mastermind, the woman behind everything that happened today. Good afternoon, Ma. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah, I'm sure this has taken a lot of strength and motivation. I'm sure you're really tired. And you can say that again. <laughs> okay, I'm so, so happy. I'm fulfilled. Yes. Um, Ma, this I'm sure this is the second time you are organizing something like this. Yes, for the knowledge for the knowledge aspect of it, this is the second time. Actually, it's a combination of awards for winners of our maritime quiz, which we've been doing for the past four years. Wow. So this is not the second time. But for the knowledge base, the reason why we chose knowledge is because we want to open it up to people, especially educators and teachers and the students, for them to know what water economy is all about. So Ma, how long have you been in maritime, into the old blue economy? The blue economy is an agenda of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. So, and they're looking at year 2030 for the implementation of the blue economy. And if you don't catch them younger now, this particular bracket will miss it. What kind of advice, being that you've already implemented this whole thing, the blue economy, trying to actually make people get more enlightened about everything that's going on around the blue economy, what advice do you have for these young people that want to go into maritime? Well, you see, young people don't want to go into maritime because they don't know about it. They don't. So what we're doing is we should open it up wow. for children to know because we went to a particular state and um, I was to give just an overview of maritime. The first thing one of the SS students asked me was, what is a vessel? Okay. You, don't, well, you don't blame the students because there's no exposure, there's no enlightenment, there's no knowledge about it. The teachers don't know. What you don't know, you can't give. So that is why the word knowledge is where we are actually focusing on. Okay. 
and they don't even know the color of water. So you must start from the basics. That was why I decided to do the bottom to top. Because right from the base, you'll be able to know that water is blue, not black, not brown. So, and these children cannot differentiate. Even adults cannot differentiate. When I take the students on board vessel with teachers, honestly, it's always a wow. They don't want to come down. If I say, let's go, your parents are with They say, no, it's a lifetime experience. You heard, if you listened to that documentary of our mentee who studied marine engineering that came first four years ago, yeah. I mean, it was a mind-blowing thing for them. And I took them to Ghana also. So that really spiced it up. And she's now going to study marine engineering. She's living in Nigeria. She's already in 200 level in maritime technology in Eforum. But she's living now to Ghana that I took her to. And from there now, I've given her a mentor in Ghana. It's all about exposure. It's all about knowledge. It's all about enlightenment. And you see, when I was growing up, um, I'm a coastal lady. I come from Lagos Island. And that place used to be a harbor. We never knew about maritime. But we just saw ships at night. The scenery, the scenery is beautiful, colorful. And we see the seamen come into our area, but we never knew anything. So that is why maybe it's out of protest that I'm saying no. What we pass through, we won't want the upcoming generation to pass through it. Because I'm a maritime stakeholder and I do supplies. It's called chandling. I do supplies to vessels. And it's all about putting food on the table. Look at that cow. It has 301 parts. And there's no vessel that births on our Nigerian waters, they will not ask for one part of it. It is so lucrative, you know. Like I told you, you can join the Maritime Reporters Association. No, guys, honestly, if you are watching this, it has been sitting down and watching all. I didn't just come here to work. I actually learned a lot of things about maritime. There, there are tons of things that I myself didn't know about all of this and honestly it is actually a sector in which we have to really face in this country thank you so much Mom, for everything welcome and thank i'm you. saying it again she is the mastermind behind oceans ambassadors foundation thank you so much Mom. thank you very have much have a nice day and you too spread the word for the people for your future and your dreams yeah. After all of this interview, I have learned something. You see, people in maritime are hard workers, one. They are straight up motivators, two. They, they put their strength in whatever they seek to do after. And this whole conference and roundtable is centered around the blue economy. That's maritime, the sea and everything. I would just love to say it has been it has been a journey and right now every single journey has a stop. I hope you enjoyed and you learned one or two things from everything we've spoken about, everything, everybody that graced this green carpet has spoken about. And one more important thing, do not let the fact that you belong to, you are a female or a male, let, don't let it judge the fact that you can do anything or be anywhere. And also, please stop throwing things into the sea or lagoons, don't spoil the ecosystem. Thank you so much. My name is Inumidu and I'm signing to out. Make your life a bleed.